SignalR is a library that helps us provide real-time web functionality to our applications. This means our server can push data to any connected client as soon as that data is provided, in real time and vice versa. In this video, we're gonna show you how to use SignalR with ASP.NET Core and Angular with a practical example. We're gonna simulate a real-time data flow by using the timer class and use the data to change states for our Angular charts in real time. So, without further ado, let's get started. To download the source code for this video, you can visit our article on the Codemaze blog. The link is in the description below. So, we have created two projects, the .NET Core project, Real-Time Charts Server, and the Angular project, Real-Time Charts Client. Let's start with the service side project and set up some basic configuration. To do that, let's open the launch settings JSON file and remove the IIS profile, modify the launch browser property and remove launch URL property. Our server-side project will run on localhost 5001 and the client-side will run on localhost 4200. So, in order to establish communication between them, we need to enable cores. Let's open the startup CS class and in the configure services method call the add course method and create a policy where we allow specific client origin. Any method, any header and allow credentials. Additionally, we have to include course in the configure method by calling the use course method and providing the current policy name. For a more detailed guide about course in ASP.NET Core, you can read enabling course in ASP.NET Core article on our site. This link is also in the description below. One additional thing, it is important to call the use course method before the use authorization or use endpoints methods. That's it regarding the configuration. Let's move on to the next part. Let's open the Angular project and install the SignalR library. And that's all. Let's switch back to the server-side project and create a new folder called Models. In that folder, we're gonna create a new class chart model. Add two properties, the data and the label and initialize our list in the constructor. We are using the data and label properties because they are required by the Angular Charts library. Having the model prepared, we're gonna continue by creating a new folder called hubconfig and inside it a new class chart hub. This class must derive from the hub class, which is base class for the SignalR hub. For now, this class will remain empty because we don't need any methods inside it. To complete the SignalR configuration, let's modify the startup CS file again. By calling the addSignalR method in the configure services method and adding SignalR to the request pipeline by pointing to our chart hub class with the provided chart path. To simulate a real time data flow from the server, we're gonna implement a timer class from the system threading namespace. Let's create a new timer features folder and inside it a new timer manager class. Now we're gonna add three private variables timer, auto reset event, and action, and the timer started property. Our constructor will accept the parameter of type action delegate and in the constructor we'll initialize the action variable. Create a new auto reset event instance. Create a new timer instance where we pass a method to execute. Auto reset event. The time to pause before the first execution. And the timeout period. And initialize the timer started property. Of course, we have to create the execute method. Call the action delegate and finally dispose of our timer after 60 seconds. 
the 60 seconds period is just added for the example's sake. After the timer manager implementation, let's create a new data storage folder and inside it a new data manager class. Inside this class, we're going to add a new static method getData, where we create a new random object and return a populated chart model list. We can see that each object in the list is populated with a random data value and a label. We're going to store four objects in this list. Finally, to complete this section, let's create a new controller file named chart controller inside the controllers folder. In this controllers class, we're using the iHub context interface and creating its instance via dependency injection. By using that instance object, we are able to access and call the hub methods. This is the reason why we don't have any method in our child hub class. We don't need any yet, because we are providing just one-way communication. The server is sending data to the client only. And we can access all the hub methods with the iHub context interface. Furthermore, let's instantiate the timer manager class in the get action and provide a callback function as a parameter. This callback function will be executed every 2 seconds. Now, let's pay attention to the hub client's all.sendAsync expression. With it, we are sending generated data to all the clients subscribed to the transfer chart data event. This means that every client that has a listener on the transfer chart data event will receive data generated by the data manager class. And that's exactly what we are going to do in the next section. To use charts in Angular, we are going to install two required libraries, the ng2 charts and charts.js. After this, we are going to modify the angular.json file by adding a path to the chart.js file. And finally, let's modify the appmodel.ts file by importing charts and HTTP client modules and adding them to the imports array. To continue, we're going to create a new service file to wrap the signal R logic. Additionally, we're going to create the chart model interface with the required data and label properties. Having done that, let's modify our service file. First, we import the signal R from ASP.NET signal R location and import chart model from its own location. Then, we create the data array that will hold the data fetched from the server and provide a data source for the chart. We need an additional private variable, hub connection. In the start connection function, we build our connection with the hub connection builder provide URI to the chart endpoint on the server and build it. Of course, we have to start our connection and log success or error messages in the console. With the add transfer chart data listener function, we subscribe to the transfer chart data event and accept the data from the server with the data parameter. Additionally, we'll log the data to the console. Now, all that's left to do is to modify the app component.ts file. In the constructor, we're injecting the SignalR service and HTTP client. Then, we have to implement the onInit interface. In the ng-onInit function, we call the start connection function the add transfer chart data listener function and our private start http request function. Finally, let's create this private function and send the http get request to the chart controller and log our results. Now, let's start the server application and let's do the same with the client. Open the developer console by pressing F12 and we can see connection started and our data as well. 
Of course, this is just a part of our goal, so let's get to the finish line. First, we're gonna stop the client and the server application. Then, let's modify the app component.html file. Let's add a single div displayed as a block and render only if data exists. Then, we have to add a canvas with the required chart elements. All the properties we're using here are pretty self-explanatory. But now, we have to create all of these properties in the app component.ts file. So, we add a chart options property with its own settings about scaling and responsiveness. Then, let's add a chart labels array with a single label inside, chart type, chart legend, and colors for each chart bar. The colors we use are blue, red, green, and gray. And that's it. We can start the server and the client again. This looks great. Our application is working as intended. Until now, we've broadcast the data only from the server to the client via one-way communication. But what happens if we want to send some data from the client to the server and then broadcast it to all of the subscribed clients? All of that via SignalR. Well, we can do that as well. So, let's imagine we want to send the current data to some API as soon as we click on our chart and then to display them on any other client. To cover that example, we could create another Angular app, but for the sake of simplicity, we're going to implement all of that in our current application. So, the first thing we want to do is to modify the chart hub class in .NET Core. Because we're starting the SignalR communication from the client, we need a hub endpoint to invoke our data to. This broadcast chart data method will receive the message from the client and then broadcast the same message to all the clients listening on the broadcast chart data event. The second step is to modify the service file in Angular. With the broadcast chart data function, we use a map function to extract only required properties from the data object. and send data to our hub endpoint by calling the invoke function which accepts the event name and the data parameters. The second function will listen to the broadcast chart data event and assign the value to the broadcasted data property. Let's just add this additional property in our code. The third step is to create a chart clicked function in the app component ts file. Call the broadcast the chart data function from the service and in the ngon init function to call the add broadcast chart data listener function. And finally, let's provide the chart clicked event for our chart. And just create a list where for each data element in the broadcast data property, we show the label and the value. After all of the changes, we can start the server application again. Open two browser windows and navigate to localhost 4200 in both of them. As soon as we click on any chart in one window, both clients will show the data. It works the same for the second client. Excellent work! Everything works like a charm. So, that's all for this video. If you liked it, we would highly appreciate you hit those like and subscribe buttons down there. Of course, don't forget to visit the Codemaze blog to download the source code. Additionally, you can subscribe to our mailing list to get notified about our new content and videos. So, stay tuned and we see you again in another video. Until then, all the best!